Today, we're talking about the controversy surrounding I'm Alex and why the British drama YouTuber has been revealed to be an absolutely awful person. With an 80 plus page Google Doc and tons of video, audio, and screenshotted messages to prove it only for all of the evidence to be confirmed by more statements from exes and former friends. But I pulled together this entire story. So by the end of the video, you can get caught up on everything that happened involving I'm Alex. If it's your first time here, hi, I'm Austin. I make videos staying caught up with the latest internet drama and news. So if that sounds like your thing, feel free to stick around. Today's story was sent to me by more people than any video I've made yet. I think six or seven different people. If you ever come across something you think I should cover, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. Before we get started, thank you so much for watching the video. Also, major content warning, we're gonna be talking about physical, verbal, and many other types of abuse. There's also mention of depression, self-harm, and suicide. So please be extremely cautious if you're sensitive to these topics. Now, let's get into it. This is Alice Hez, a TikTok creator with close to 1 million followers. And the situation began on June 15th when Alice tweeted, here's my statement on the situation I've been scared to speak out on. It's best it was made public. How horrible this person with a platform is. I'd hate to see another woman go through this. Please read the statement first before continuing. Then she includes a link to a Google Drive folder containing a statement along with video and audio evidence, which I'll go into detail regarding her abusive relationship with the content creator I'm Alex. And Alex is a 25 year old British drama YouTuber. Now getting into Alice's initial statement, it's an 82 page Google doc, including some text that explains her and Alex's relationship broken up by a bunch of text message screenshots. I'm going to have to just point out some of the highlights then summarize the rest. But if you want access to the full thing, it'll be linked in the description below. On page one, Alice shares that they started dating on March 17th, 2023, and things started off great. But after some time passed, Alex expected her to be on call 24 seven since she was working from home, which also led to her having to shut out other friends to make him happy. Things got worse and he started getting on camera just to shout at her on Discord calls, going as far as to tell her to self-harm, knowingly weaponizing her history of dealing with it against her. Alex would also send her messages calling her a whore, a bitch, and slimy, even blaming her for starting arguments. The next eight pages include screenshots of text messages where Alex is repeatedly bugging Alice to get on Discord calls, then acting like a baby when she isn't able to. In other screenshots, Alex is calling her the R word multiple times, also calling her effing stupid and a weird effing idiot. Then later during another argument, calling her an annoying C word. On page 10, Alice explains in more text that he would threaten to break up with her because she interacted with followers tweets with him saying things like, I'm going to refollow everyone I unfollowed for you if you're going to be like that. Adding that she found him stalking his ex with her old nudes still saved to his phone. The next page, Alice goes on to preface all of the horrible text messages from Alex that are linked below saying that they consist of him calling her unlovable, a whore, psycho, constantly calling her sick, telling her he doesn't want to be with her, breaking up with her, then taking it back, then apologizing and love bombing her for forgiveness. For context, Alice adds that she has depression and he would use it against her, which only made it far worse, adding that people will question why I even stayed and believe me, I wish I could turn back time, but I believed his lies when he apologized to me and I really tried to believe he would stop going so far if I asked him to. I thought I was good enough for him to stop calling me a whore or to tell me to die or threaten to leave in every argument. Later in the statement on page 23, Alice explains that I changed myself by suppressing my emotions and that I was not upset over previous arguments because he would get angry and tell me to get over it. He would tell me, I said sorry so you would shut up. These were one-sided narcissistic arguments telling me my feelings mean nothing and that they are based on wank. But when he is upset, I get spammed in my messages and 100 insults until I say sorry, no matter who is at fault. He would tell me he can change my life forever, that I need him and that I'm nothing without him and what he does for me. He took out anger from his friends on me, telling me I can do everything I want alone without any of you. On the next page, she added that work related arguments would be weekly, nearly daily if I showed signs of me being sad over something he said to me. Quote, 
you should be effing grateful that as someone with this expertise, I actually have tried to talk to you about something like that, end quote. This was him talking about whether I wanted to stream or make YouTube videos. If the conversation didn't go his way, or I said I didn't want to do a certain thing, he would blow up and get upset because I wouldn't do it his way. Then continue to be little me. I would always tell him I'm not with him for work talk. I don't care how much you can help me if all this will do is cause arguments. I don't care how successful I can be. He pushed it on me to take his knowledge and make videos with him when all I want is my boyfriend. I only ever wanted something personal and genuine and I never got that. Then after pages and pages of screenshots showing Alex's awful words backing everything up, Page 31 of the statement includes a screenshot where Alex is just casually calling her the N-word. 10 pages later, another screenshot shows Alex saying, I'm going to effing kill you and I'm going to break your neck. So based on what we've talked about so far, you probably have a decent idea of how this abusive relationship is functioning. Alex says something insanely awful, then comes back with texts like these begging for forgiveness. However, what I didn't expect is that after all of this, they decided to move in together and things didn't get off to a great start with Alice texting her mom this during that time. Things are fine, then bad, fine, then bad. When I say fine, I mean I've not forgiven or feeling better, but I'll move on so he stops complaining and being mad that I'm upset from his actions. I've never wanted to leave someone so badly or come home so badly. I can't help holding back tears whenever I think of coming home away from this hellhole. I'm literally on the brink of a breakdown whenever I see you and dad. I just want to be home. Alongside that, I can't believe I've been putting up with someone like this with no morals or human emotions, and he scares the shit out of me. Then Alice goes into detail about their first physical fight living together. I'm going to issue a second content warning because reading this actually makes me sick. Please skip ahead by a minute if you need to. We had the worst arguments I've ever experienced with anyone, but after the move, it became even worse. On the fourth day of living together, on the 19th October, he had taken it to the next level and got physical in a fight. It started as a screaming argument where I begged him to leave me alone and to just stop. I ended up trying to get away from him and he followed me. I went to walk downstairs and he grabbed my hood and pulled me back until I fell on the floor. He told me that I'm not getting away, so I got up and made a run for the bathroom. He gets in my way and grabs me, puts me in a headlock, and covers my mouth because I'm screaming for him to get off of me. I got to the bathroom and locked it behind me, and he screams from the other side, calling me crazy, telling me to leave the house after I've asked him to leave me alone. Following this, Alice includes text screenshots with her parents, where they are urging her to get out, with her mom saying that he'll inevitably end up punching her at some point. On page 45, Alice explains in more text that they would continue having arguments where he would scream at her to off herself multiple times over small things, which grew to the point where she feared for her own life. Things got worse when he broke her glasses and threw them in the trash, then helping her look for them, pretending he was innocent, only for her to find them in the trash and for Alex to just laugh it off, acting like it was no big deal. Further down, she explains that he would frequently make jokes about her cat being his and joking that he would take the cat away from her. On the next page, Alice states that the 28th of December was the day she decided to stop putting up with everything saying that she was getting the house ready for Alex's parents since he doesn't clean or prepare anything, with him thinking that she was angry at him since he refused to help. This led to him shouting at her, asking what he's supposed to do. Then after assigning him a few cleaning tasks, he freaks out saying he can't handle more than one at a time. So after this, Alice starts to walk away and Alex kicks her in the back. On page 48, she continues by adding that, at this point, it was the second time he'd hurt me, and I was scared, so I texted my friend to pick me up, and I started packing. He follows me around the house, screaming random things at me, trying to justify his actions for going too far. I recorded this because I was scared he would hit me again. I say nothing, and I am packing to the point where I am sweating from fear, as he is following me, screaming at me, calling me the n-word and useless, etc. After I left, I later picked up my things after he threatened to throw them outside. A over $4,000 setup. I found everything on the floor and taken apart. 
The keyboard was smashed and scattered everywhere. He claimed the keys had fallen off my keyboard when he was packing it all away. When I got home and plugged everything in, I found the monitor screens were both smashed to bits, the keyboard broken, and the camera too. Then, showing photos of the smashed monitor. On page 50, Alice explains that even after ending the relationship, Alex continued trying to manipulate her, begging for another chance, claiming he'd make things better. However, at this point, she realized how abusive he was and refused to go back. But this led to Alex trying to argue with her about what really happened in their relationship. So she would block him on every social media platform, only for him to go to the next one and message her again. This went as far as Alex trying to reach her through the Instagram account she made for her cat. In one attempt to get her back, he said, Let me cook though. The house is all clean. I just put the bins out. With Alice replying, That isn't hot. It's basic living, kid. Screenshots on a later page show Alex attempting to see her again by hand delivering a onesie that she supposedly left behind. This was followed by weeks and weeks of Alex begging to be taken back by bombarding Alice with messages. He even got so desperate, he started mailing Amazon gifts to her house with messages saying things like, I am deeply sorry for upsetting you and letting you down constantly. I hope one day you can forgive me and we can talk. From Alex Elmsley, which was followed by actual handwritten notes that were delivered to her house. The 82-page Google Doc wraps up with Alice saying that if Alex tries to deny all of this, like he suggests, she will release more undeniable evidence. The Google Drive folder that the statement is in also includes seven other video and audio clips. The first video shows Alex berating Alice in a Discord call, telling her she should follow orders like a dog. Thing about you, and this is the thing, and this is why I can go round and round in circles. I join call, and when I'm getting, you're talking to me. Going, this is the thing. Even though, now, now, when it's too fucking late, you admit that you did everything fucking wrong. But when it actually matters, when you should lay down like a good fucking dog, you don't fucking do it. You fight for some reason. I don't know why you fight, because you're losing, because you end up admitting that you fucked it all up anyway. So it's just fucking weird. And I know that you're going to end up admitting that you fucked it all up. The second video in the folder is from the situation we talked about earlier, where she was leaving the kitchen after cleaning up and Alex kicked her in the back, then continued to follow her and yell, even calling her the N-word at one point. The full thing is almost six minutes long, so go to the link below if you want to watch it all. But here's just the first minute. Oh, what? I don't understand. It's not like what anything to be stuck up over. It's like, and then you look like a fucking miserable fucking little c all the time. But like your face is annoying to look at, like when I come downstairs. Like, I'm actually fed up of looking at you. Which is why I sleep downstairs, so I don't want to have to come upstairs and Oh, you're taking all the covers! It's like a woman just like f***ing asked me to buy another one or stop f***ing complaining. Like nothing, the thing is it annoys me, nothing needs to be an argument because everything is fixable. Buy a new duvet, I sleep downstairs. But no, you've always got to act like none of this stuff is because you don't actually try and fix any of your f***ing problems. It's infuriating at this point. You don't actually like, you don't clean up after yourself. Nigga, neither do you. So, don't even, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I don't go around. The third Google Drive video shows Alex once again belittling Alice over a Discord call, this time threatening to bash her head against the wall. Is it generally because you're just fucking brain dead? Yeah, I'm very brain dead, yeah. Is that why you decided to go on the fucking offensive instead of the, Didn't uh, maybe, I don't, know, I don't know what to call what you did. It was weird. It's always weird. You always take the fucking weird route. Just do the normal Sorry. route, which is, just do the normal route, but a normal girlfriend yeah, would do acting like I didn't, I didn't mean it. just me, and that's something you really need to fucking fix. I'm gonna fucking bash your fucking head against the wall with a brick if you don't shut the fuck up. You, because this one, genuinely, this one, this one, you, you fucked this royally. <laughs> fucked this. There's also an audio recording in the folder titled "It Wasn't Your Fault." But we're gonna save that for last. The fourth video in the Google Drive folder includes Discord audio of Alex bragging about how much he knows while putting down everyone else's content. I think I may have said like a hundred times to the point where it's actually really hard to follow what I'm saying because it's so flexible. I've mm -hmm. gone, you could do this, but you might be able to do that, but you might be able to do that, and you might be able to do this, and this might work, but you might be able to do that. And it's all, it sounds fucking mental. I, I don't even understand how you could possibly actually follow along to it. I, like Most of my friends struggle to actually understand what I'm saying. Um, but that's why I'm a professional, and you're all not. 
The next video in the folder is a screen recording showing Alex trying to contact Alice by sending message after message. This goes on for almost a full minute of scrolling. The last video in the drive is another Discord call recording where Alex is complaining and tells Alice her life is down the effing drain. Like massive issues there. Oh and you God. think you can, you think you can just ignore them because like, well, what's the worst that can happen? Um, I don't know. Uh, your boyfriend's a fucking famous internet celebrity and doesn't trust these people because he has to keep his circle small because you might not have anything to fucking lose because your life might be down the fucking drain, but I still have quite a lot that I would like to fucking give. Uh, you're making it incredibly fucking hard for me. Just like Lewis did. I fucking hate all of you. You guys are fucking like, like, I can't make any videos of Paul Breach. Now let's jump back to the audio that was uploaded which is a 25 minute voice message where Alex is trying to apologize for all of his horrible behavior, claiming that after the breakup, he's completely changed. Here's the first two minutes. It wasn't acceptable behavior, like in any way, shape or form. It was insane. Like, I, I guess I've just been stuck in that cycle for so long that um, I felt like I could do no wrong. I felt like I was the fucking, you know, oh, look at me, I do all this fucking work and I do everything and, I try and do this and you know just nobody's appreciative and you know i know you appreciated it and i know that you appreciated the effort that i used to put in and uh then i just stopped because i had you and you're my girlfriend and we live together and the more further we got for our relationship the uh less effort i put in and if it wasn't for you leaving i might never ever ever have changed my ways i might have just continued on like that at the end of the day, the only thing that's important is that I didn't listen to you. You were right. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. I was impossible to work with. I didn't make it easy. I constantly thought inwards about myself and not about you and what was going on. I didn't make any attempts to change. I didn't make any attempts to fix my life. I made excuses. And um, it got to the point where I wanted to be alone. Because if I was alone, nobody could tell me that I was f***ing up and that I was doing anything wrong. And for the first week that you weren't here, I just spent the entire week doing nothing. And after that week, I realized just kind of like how f***ed up my life was. And I have made attempts to try and fix it. I have a schedule. I take out the bins. I look after the cats. After this, he rambles on, trying to explain everywhere he went wrong in the past, acting like he now understands how insane he was being, even though he continues to word vomit for the next 23 minutes. The tweet that has the full audio with subtitles is linked below if you want to listen to the whole thing. The next day, on June 16th, news about I'm Alex's behavior started to spread even faster after friends of Alex started to post statements regarding Alice's document. The creator iNabber uploaded a series of Instagram stories siding with Alice and claiming they had no idea how awful Alex was. Another creator, Jake Boz, also posted a story in support of Alice. And soon after this, a third creator named Mimulus followed up by saying, I'm aware of the Alex situation. I would usually wait until both parties have said their side publicly before speaking about it, but I think the evidence here is overwhelming. I spent this morning reading what Alice has written, and no one should have to go through what she has. It's awful and disturbing, and has seriously shocked me. I'm still processing what happened. This is one of the worst situations I have ever seen in my life, and I hope Alice is okay. It took a lot of courage to speak about this. One day after these statements, on June 17th, Another one of Alex's exes tweeted, my experience with I'm Alex, and it links to a two-page Google Doc where this content creator named King Ani lays out the details of their past relationship, which took place from June 2017 until March 2018. They write, it was the most toxic relationship I've ever been in, and I was lucky to get out of it when I did. It started out great, as they always do, the honeymoon phase as they call it. But as time went on, things just got worse and worse. I was fortunate to get out when I did, but reading all the new information that's come out, he's clearly gotten worse. During the relationship, he made me feel insane, like I wasn't myself anymore. It never felt like he listened to me. I always felt belittled and inferior. Whenever we recorded videos together, he would constantly talk over me and never let me have my moment. Most of the time, when I had problems, he always somehow made it about himself or talked about his own issues. He would get stressed over his YouTube channel constantly and complain about uploading, as if it was the hardest job on the planet, and no one had it harder than him. His classic line was, I can't catch an effing break. 
if we ever had a disagreement, he would always sometimes allude to the possibility of killing himself over minor conflicts as a threat, so I couldn't continue with the conversation. It was nearly impossible to give him any kind of criticism, because it was like adding to the pile of minor issues that he already had blown far out of proportion in his head. Towards the bottom of the document, Ani links a video, which shows Alex crying in front of the camera for seven minutes, explaining how bad his life and career has been lately. Below the link, she explains that this video was released as a response to me breaking up with him. He uploaded this video after I stopped talking to him as a way of trying to guilt me into replying to him. He did to me what he has done in his relationship with Alice, where he would fly off the handle and get mad, then act all apologetic and sad to try to get me to feel sorry for him and forgive everything he has said and done. Ani wraps up the document by explaining this situation. Lastly, the only time he ever laid a finger on me was when he grabbed me as I was trying to run away from a conflict. We were trying to record a YouTube video together, and he was getting frustrated at having to restart the recording multiple times. He started shouting and beating his fist on the table, even going as far as to break his microphone. I was scared, so I got up to leave the room, which is when he grabbed my arm to physically stop me. I remember saying, you grabbed my arm, several times in shock, as if to say, who the F would ever grab someone like that? Once again, I was fortunate that that was the only time something like that ever happened. I got out before it got even worse, as it clearly has with the new information that's come out. It saddens me that it's all come this far. I wished Alice the best privately, and it breaks my heart to have seen all the things she had gone through. I hope Alice's and my story show you what he was really like behind the scenes. If you're in an abusive relationship, please get out now. You can't fix them. Around this time, a third ex came forward with another statement about Alex's awful behavior. However, their account has since been set to private, likely due to hate they're receiving, so I'm gonna leave them anonymous. But the stories they did share look extremely similar to what we've covered about Alex so far. Later on June 17th, even more YouTubers and former friends of Alex spoke out in support of Alice's statement. This included the likes of Will Any, Italian Bach, and Mia X Mon. And the next day, two more creators added on, including George Clark, who was Alex's most recent roommate. But as of today, we still have yet to hear any response from I'm Alex. The best thing he can do at this point is disappear forever before YouTube decides to ban him for threatening and harming other creators, which would make the platform safer for everybody. But with that, we're pretty much caught up on everything that happened involving I'm Alex and how the British drama YouTuber has been revealed to be an absolutely awful person with an 80 plus page Google Doc and tons of video, audio, and screenshotted messages to prove it only for all of this to be confirmed and added onto by even more exes and former friends. But now that you're caught up on this controversy surrounding I'm Alex, I need to know, what do you think about everything? Please let me know that, along with any story updates and things I missed down in the comments. If you want to get caught up with even more internet drama and news, subscribe to either channel to catch the next story, and check out any of my recent videos. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.